in my organization, we monitor these kinds of things. We research them. We've been doing it for about 20 years. And we go all around the country doing this. And the one thing that I say um, to everyone is that um, if you want to deal with these kinds of elements, you have to be proactive before they decide what they want to do. I mean, it's good for people to come out to the rallies. Yes, I know people, a lot of people are concerned about it, but I always say come out to the rallies to um, basically counter them. But we should be on our own timetable. We should be finding out who's who and what's what. How are they affecting our communities beyond their public displays? And and basically respond to that, trying to diminish their abilities to function in our communities, in our state. I think what happened on the 6th in particular probably scared a lot of them. Probably scared them because it happened right after Charlottesville. After Charlottesville, a lot of them didn't really feel like coming out. And those that did were met with 40,000 people the following week in Boston. So you guys here are doing research. We're, we're here to, uh, I was here to see what would happen, to be honest. Uh -huh. To be honest. I didn't, um, I didn't know whether they would come. I was prepared to go either way. I wasn't really sure. I, I was kind of anticipating them not showing up, really. Because, well, as I say... Ahead of the curve there. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the thing. We, we kind of, like, get an idea of what it is, how it is they operate. And right-wingers, especially the far right in New Jersey, are afraid of their own shadow. They, they know that when they come out, we respond to it <laughs> effectively. You so, said you're trying to figure out who's who and what's what in New Jersey. What groups are prominent here in New Jersey? Well, extremist groups? Per, that, um, per that sticker right there, and there's a couple of them down the road, the New Jersey European Heritage Association, they're a small group, but you see their flyers. They see stickers like that all over the country, let alone places, the state. Yeah. We're based in New Brunswick. They plaster the place, and uh, sometimes they even do flash mobs because, yes, they'll have rallies, but they don't want anybody to know they're coming out. They're a small group. That's one group. You also have um, you also have the Proud Boys. You have a Southern um, chapter, and you have a Northern chapter of Proud Boys that are in the state. Um, various neo-Nazi groups. There's um, Patriot Front. They're they're in the state. Um, some of them are represented in New Brunswick, and. Uh, I'm just trying to think that a lot of your militia groups, especially when you start going out to West Jersey, when you start going out to Western New Jersey, you start seeing them. I remember maybe 20 years ago, um, a group called National Vanguard was prominent. They don't exist that much anymore, but Lord knows where the rest of those, um, West of those members, where those members went after that. That was probably about 2005, 2006 was probably the last time I saw them. And I was living in Garfield, New Jersey at the time. They used to hold um, meetings every um, every okay, other guys. month in um, in a little in a little clubhouse in what's the name of it? Elmwood Park in Elmwood Park, New Jersey. Now, now that clubhouse is a Muslim community center. I have um, I have a uh, documentary on Netflix called All Right Age of Rage, and I was in and I've done. Uh, movies such as Skin, which you can see on Amazon Prime. That's, but bottom line is, we've been around since about 20 years, and this is what we do. We basically cover these kinds of um, groups and individuals and try to make people aware of us. Oh, it's the New Jersey sticker. European Heritage Association. He has another sticker. Where's it at? Oh, oh, that's all beat up. I know. <laughs> this is just, this be a waste of time trying to show this. I know that a guy out of Linden, New Jersey, named Ron Shee, he rolls with it from time to time, and he has... um protested he has actually counter protested the um the uh, anti-ice rallies that were happening up north jersey way because um it was they were being promoted by a jewish organization it's uh, the njeha right NJEHA. njeha new jersey european heritage association and if you look on their website very anti-semitic at first i first came across he, he goes by different names but he um but his real name is dan d'ambly okay i first met him in charlottesville okay um then I saw him again for the sequel in DC, <laughs> and he, he's on Telegram at, under a nice man's neighborhood. Were you there last week? But I, I had a doctor's appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I was furious that I wasn't there. What would you have done if you were there? You done? I would have been documenting and probably swinging on a few people if they if they recognized me, because that's how that's how hot it. Oh no, they they got. he's targeted. They they, yeah. they had like a racist song. But I would have. Um, they, oh, they've had songs hard. written about me and everything. But that's, <laughs> but no, but no, it's kind of like it's kind of like I am particularly well known around those circles. So for the most part, they probably have been cussing me out or something. 
But um, I would have been worried going, um, chances are I would have gone into that Capitol because I would have been following the crowd to see what they were doing. But, and that would have gotten me in trouble. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's gonna be interesting to see what I see over at the inauguration. Okay, you calling it DC? 